How does solar fare on an east-west facing roof throughout November? Is it even worth having? And will you get solar in time for Christmas? And does it actually save you any money despite the poor generation throughout winter? In this video I aim to find out and answer those questions and discuss how my solar and home battery perform throughout November. We also have the reintroduction of saving sessions this month which has provided some extra welcome additional income. Stay tuned to find out how it all went. Hi everyone, I'm Danny V Solar and on this channel you can follow my journey all things solar, EVs, renewables and much much more. Please hit the like button if you find this video useful and consider subscribing to my channel for more similar content. It's totally free and it helps my channel grow and reach more people on YouTube and hopefully help them out in turn. Let me know in the comments how your system got on throughout November and also don't forget to look for Octi throughout this video as well. Personally with my own system I've noticed a massive difference throughout the year in the difference between the summer and winter generation. From around February time onwards the solar generation really ramped up up to a high of 836 kilowatt hours in June. From August and September it quickly dropped off again so I thought it made sense to start with this chart today. As you can see we've made a very nice almost perfectly symmetrical triangle shape with this chart and I think it shows nicely how an east-west array performs throughout the year. With the south facing array you would likely not have quite as much of a difference in the summer and winter generation and probably more of a gentle curve throughout the year. The sun just doesn't get high enough in the sky for an east-west array to perform well throughout the winter and the shorter days only compound this problem as well. The next chart paints a similar picture as well. This chart shows the best, worst and average generation for each month of the year. Even in summer on the worst days due to the length of time it is light you still get a pretty decent amount of generation compared with a bad day in winter. The poor winter generation was a big reason for me switching to Intelligent Octopus Go in the middle of September as the amount that the solar panels exported back to the grid reduced. This was always my plan when I bought the EV in June as it makes running the car so cheap even without the solar generation in winter. Speaking of Octopus, if you would like to make an easy £50 just by signing up to Octopus Energy and switching your energy supply to them it would be great if you could use my referral link that's on the screen now. I also get £50 from Octopus if you use this which helps me to keep improving the quality of these videos. Anyway, on to the charts. And first let's look at the generation for the month of November and this is the first month since last winter where we haven't generated enough to meet the home demand for the month which is to be expected really. I had this system installed last December so I know how badly it performed last winter. However the summer generation more than makes up for this for the winter generation so please don't get me wrong I would still always recommend getting solar panels installed on your house. As you can see for November we generated a total of 107.6 kilowatt hours so almost half of the 204 kilowatt hours generated throughout October. 31 of that went straight from the solar panels for use in the home, 14 kilowatt hours went into topping the battery up and 62 kilowatt hours was exported back to the grid. If we next look at the best day of generation this was on the 10th of November where we generated 7.99 kilowatt hours and you can see the battery was charged up very early in the morning to 100 percent uh, it only dropped off a little bit throughout the day but then the solar that we did generate topped this back up to 100 percent until around about tea time maximum generation was 1.84 kilowatts for that day and as you can see the battery got down to around about 70 percent before it started charging when that cheap window hit again the Worst day was just four days later on the 14th of November where we only generated 0.75 kilowatt hours. Again the battery was pretty much full most of the day and we only got a maximum generation of 0.7 kilowatts for that day. Generation started around about 8 o'clock and was done by 4 so a very short day. But yet again the battery only got to around about 70% before it started charging again so absolutely no problem with charging at the moment. If we look at grid import we have 135 kilowatt hours coming from the grid and this was mostly to charge a battery overnight on the cheaper energy run the washer dishwasher at the seven and a half pence intelligent octopus rate home consumption was around about the same as normal remember this is excluding my ev charging and just what the home used this month it was 174 kilowatt hours so pretty consistent with the previous months throughout the year and most of this usage was actually supported by the battery or the solar throughout the day. Our daily usage ranged from about 2.6 kilowatt hours on the first when we were actually on holiday to a high of 7.81 kilowatt hours. 
So still pretty low usage throughout the month. And if we next look at my EV usage, yet again, we do not have an accurate reading from the Zappi and the Harvey. The Harvey seems to be losing connection to the router for some reason. And there's not much distance between the router and the Harvey, so I have no idea why this keeps happening. I'm hoping I've now fixed it and it'll have a more stable connection going forward. So hopefully we don't see this issue again. But as you can see, it totally skewed the usage for the month and kind of joined two charges together somehow and then recorded a much higher reading than we actually used during the month. The actual amount for my EV throughout the month of November was 344 kilowatt hours. So pretty much on a par with last month as well. Although the cold weather does seem to have affected the range quite a bit. And if we move on to export, the figure for this month was 70 kilowatt hours exported back to the grid, all at 15 pence per kilowatt hour on the Intelligent Octopus tariff. So not too bad with filling the battery full overnight and then exporting the excess that the solar generates throughout the day. You might notice the two big blue bars there for two of the days throughout the month. This was on days where we had saving sessions. They've returned now and uh, they're generating quite good income for those of us with solar. And because of this, I purposely exported power from the battery back to the grid at the times of the sessions. So that explains what those blue bars are. And if we now look at the payback for the month of November, we consumed 173.93 kilowatt hours for use in the house, as mentioned. And this equated to 134.9 kilowatt hours overall. And rather than split the cheap and high rate out here, I've just looked at my bills and the, the average rate was about 8.5 pence for the month based on using the cheap rate and what I've used during the day on the higher rate. So that equated to £11.57. Solar generation was 107.6 kilowatt hours and of that I exported 70.03. And 70 kilowatt hours at 15 pence export equates to £10.50 for the month. So the cost without solar would have been £52.18 and the cost with solar was just £1.07. On top of that, we also made £16.58 from the two saving sessions. I think one of those actually paid out £4 per kilowatt hour as well. So well worth getting involved with if you've got solar and battery and you can export back to the grid. So that gave us a saving of £67.69 for the month. And if we add that to the rest of the savings throughout the year, that equates to £1,326. So our remaining payback, we started on 11,000, just under 11,000, and we're now on 9,653. So paying back pretty nicely. And if we include the car usage, 344 kilowatt hours for the month was used, and that equated to a cost of just 29 pounds and 52 pence. I think the average cost of diesel for where I used to fill up was 1 pound 56 pence, and that would have equated to about 140 pound for the month. So a big saving again of 110 pound and 88 pence. And although we can't attribute this directly to having the solar and battery install, it's still a big saving. So if we add that onto the total savings, we get a cumulative saving for the year through having an EV and solar and battery of 2,013 pounds. So over 2,000 pound now, so that's great. If we include the fuel, remaining payback is now less than 9,000 pound. It's absolutely fantastic. And if we move on to look at the bill overall for the month, hopefully I've calculated this correctly because I haven't had the actual bill through yet. The standing charge, £14.58 for the month and then electricity charge of £40.09. Export, we made £10.50 and then with the gas, standing charge of £8.16 and a charge of £77.94. So we've used the heating much more this month. So we've seen an increase in that. But the home's been nice and warm for the little one, so I don't mind paying that so much. And then that gives us this total of £130.27 for the month. And that includes heating, electricity, hot water and EV charging as well. So not too bad. So nearly one year since I had my Give Energy battery and solar panels installed now. Stay tuned for my next video, which will discuss the performance throughout the year and how the system has fared versus what I expected when I first had the system installed, how much the system saved me, and also whether I would have done anything differently or whether I have any regrets. So it should be an interesting watch, so stay tuned and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.